So welcome, welcome here. Thank, Thank you, you very much. It was a very stressful day yesterday for you, or was it interesting to meet all the people over here at Roleplay Convention because you were able to make signatures on posters, you make photos with the fans, and likewise, how was this direct contact for you with the audience? I thought yesterday was absolutely fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it, and what I enjoyed so much about this particular con is the cosplay. Some of the costumes yesterday were just absolutely stunning. The attention to detail, it's just absolutely fantastic. We love these events. Uh, we wouldn't do them otherwise. We'd just stay at home. We wouldn't bore anybody. And it was lovely meeting uh, new fans that we hadn't met before. But also because uh, the German Comic Con community is such a close-knit community. We, we've also met a lot of old friends that we have seen before at previous Comic Cons. Uh, so I had a fantastic day yesterday. It was absolutely great. It was a beautiful day outside. We went and had a bit of lunch, maybe one beer or two, and it was very pleasant. Well, I don't really think there's anything to it. Oh. Hello, hello, hello. Whoa. Am I talking? Yes. Can I hear That's myself? Right. Yeah, just about. There's nothing to add to that. He said it all. <laughs> no. You're just lazy. Said, plus, of course, Cologne is a great city. And it's always a joy to be here. So for all of you, has it been the first time in Germany? I know that particularly you know some more of German. You potentially can talk as well uh, some sentences in German. Is that true? Yeah, he can. I'm in Deutsch. Yeah, ich bin vielmals in Deutschland gewesen für viele Jahre. Ich war hier erstmals als Student in Pforzheim. Ah, okay. Und ich bin durch ganze Deutschland gefahren, also Westdeutschland. Ähm, Ostdeutschland kenne ich nicht so gut. So Aber it's time to go over there. Ich will, ich will dahin fahren, ja, ja, in der Zukunft. Your German is much better than even ours potentially, right? <laughs> <laughs> For you guys, uh, first time in Germany or been here quite frequently? Uh, yeah. No, I've been here before uh, several times. I've been uh, Hanover, Solingen, uh, Bonn, and uh, where else were we? Oh, I was in München Gladbach as well. Dorsten, so this is about my fifth uh, time in Germany, Düsseldorf. and I love it. Where else? Dorsten, Düsseldorf. Dorsten and Düsseldorf, yeah. Solingen. So, yeah. Yes, Köln. Yeah, no, I've been, I've been here several area, times. Yeah. <laughs> You'll all be sick of me by the time I leave here tomorrow. <laughs> I've been to Cologne many times. I did a film here about 15 or 16 years ago. So I was here for several weeks across another city quite well then. Um, also, my son lives and works in Berlin, so I'm an annual traveler to Berlin, and well, I'm frequently in Germany. It's a, it's a great country. Oh, and it's part of the EU. <laughs> Brexit! Yes. Don't start me. Yeah, we've been very stupid. <laughs> Let's not talk about Brexit or Donald Trump. Let's just not go there. <laughs> also, we're not here to talk about politics. Topics, but on... Um, well, another question would be there. Is there any particular place you, you would really like to visit in Germany? Believe it or not, I haven't been to Berlin yet. Um, my uncle, many years ago, was stationed in Berlin, and most of my family got out there to visit him in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, I was the one who didn't manage to get over there. So Berlin is somewhere I would absolutely love to visit. There are many places I've been which I'd like to go back to. What I would like to do is go back to Hamburg to look into my, my father's grandmother was from Hamburg, so I'm partly German, and I'd like to go and see if I've got any relatives there. Now, as I said before, I'd love to go to the eastern part of Germany because I don't know it so well and be lovely to travel through there at some point, so hopefully we will do that, you know. Let's talk a little bit more about Game of Thrones, where quite obviously you're here. When you signed your contracts, or when you get first time the offer to play a part of Game of Thrones, have you been already aware of what Game of Thrones potentially would be? Uh, no. I mean, we, uh, when, uh, we, uh, both Ian and I uh, auditioned for roles in season one. Uh, so we were there, if you like, from the beginning. And I knew it was going to be, I knew we had a good show. 
I knew because simply from the quality of the actors I was working with, uh, the sets we were on, the 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 detail, the costumes. I you know you knew you, you were part of a very good show, but we didn't think it was gonna go the way it went. It was only season three that we started. You know I. I started to hear things on set about the uh, DVD sales, and then by season four, it had gone crazy. Uh, so I didn't, I don't think anybody associated with the show realized it was going to be so big. Uh, what I discovered first was that, and I didn't know this, was that it was based on a series of books, uh, and that the books actually had quite a, a considerable fan base, especially in America. So once you knew that, you thought, all right, this certainly has the potential to become a big series. But it's not always straightforward to translate books uh, into TV. And one of the great triumphs of Game of Thrones, the series, is how brilliantly they have managed to do that. I mean, they're big stories. There's a lot of detail. But somehow or another, they have managed to condense it and yet give it full realization and I think that's a tribute to the creative heads behind it and then as, as Ian says the whole realization of it you know it, it just in practical terms has been phenomenal. Not long after I started shooting on this show I was in Pakistan adjudicating a film festival in Sindh, Karachi and I was invited to do an interview by the Dawn newspaper. Uh, in which I told the story about how I knew absolutely nothing about the show when I first joined it, how I confused the names of the characters, uh, why I didn't know uh, that Jamie had a golden hand and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I fessed up, I knew nothing about it. And there was a vitriolic blog appeared underneath that, a list of comments about what a cheapskate I was and how I'm, I'm an aspiring actor, I would have done the preparation and so on. In fact, I'd just come from doing a movie with Woody Allen where I hadn't been allowed to see the script. And then I did a movie with Mike Lee in which we didn't have a script. So the idea that it's necessary to know everything all the time in order to function simply isn't true. In this case, I knew nothing. Yes, you all mentioned um, Game of Thrones is a lot about the story and there's very often a plot twist and things happen which you wouldn't expect. Do you guys have any favorite Game of Thrones moment or any favorite Game of Thrones character besides your own ones? Well, for me, I mean, that, I think that's the reason why the series has been so incredibly successful. Uh, you invest yourself on all these wonderful characters and you literally don't know what's going to happen next. And it adds such an excitement to when you're watching the show. Uh, my personal favorite moment, uh, which I felt was the most heartbreaking moment I've ever seen on television and genius storytelling was hold the door. Oh. I thought that was just brilliant uh, and brilliant the way they crafted it and created it all the way through the six seasons right up for that moment and I thought that was stunning. That's my number one Game of Thrones moment. It was an absolutely extraordinary moment at the end of the last screen season where Cersei has killed everybody and she takes the throne herself. But Lena's such a masterly actor that her face, the one of emptiness, the one of loss, of self-betrayal, the price she's paid to achieve this goal, it was a beautiful bit of acting and it was a lovely moment televisually. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, the story is full of, of, of wonderful moments. It's kind of... It set the bar very high for itself, and in a way it set the bar very high for any other television series. Game of Thrones, probably more than any other series, has been packed full of surprises, shocks, the unexpected. And because of that, when you start to watch uh, virtually every episode now in the series, you're going in saying, I wonder what the hell's going to happen next. I wonder who's going to die. I wonder how so you know, somebody's going to disappear, whatever. You go in with a huge expectation that something you didn't expect is going to happen, um, which is brilliant. But it puts a challenge up to the writers because they kind of keep having to deliver that, you know, episode eight, episode eight. And in a funny sort of way, that's spun off into other TV series. I've noticed now with other things, even, you know, things that we would be making at home domestically, 
where you feel the writers are themselves feeling under pressure to deliver a surprise. So a bar has been set that everybody is now having to measure up to to some degree. Final question as time is running out. Would you do it again? Was this one of the best decisions you ever did to sign the contract to play a part in Game of Thrones? Or would you say there is some movie or some particular series which I die hard fan of your own where you would like to play a part of like House of Cards or something else? Or was it really the best thing yet in your uh, life? As an actor as an actor you take whatever job you are offered. And make no mistake, you audition for this, for that, and then if you're lucky, you get a part. Uh, getting a role on Game of Thrones was the biggest piece of luck I've ever had in my career. It was an utter privilege to be a part of that show. Uh, I think it's made television history and it has changed my life completely. Uh, so that's the only thing I would say. Yes, I would take it again tomorrow. I'd go back to it tomorrow. I'd go back as an extra tomorrow. I'd go and make coffee for them tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I definitely love doing it. Would love to do it again. It's a material now. It's behind us. That's that. But Ian's right. I mean, when a show has the level of visibility and the level of fan sort of respect and appreciation that this show has, it becomes for anybody who's in it a bit of a game changer because people know you from it. People in the business know you from it. So whenever you're going up for a job, it means that sometimes you will get seen for something. You may not get it, but you'll get seen for something that previously you might never even have been seen for. So in that sense, it's a game changer for any actor. Yeah, it's a privilege to be part of this show, but truthfully, it's a privilege to be a working actor. And I wouldn't want to knock anything else by saying this is definitely the best. It was pretty darn good. But there are other jobs out there, and I'm looking forward to finding them. Thank you very much for being here. Our time is over. It was really a pleasure to have you on stage. I hope the guys in the stream and in the audience like it as well. Thank you very much. You're continuing to sign for a little bit of a time, and enjoy the time in Germany. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.